TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The United Nations calls upon Israel to end its blockade of the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, claiming it to be the source of all of the enclave's troubles. The Iranian parliament passes a bill requiring the Ayatollah regime to raise its nuclear uranium enrichment levels to 20%. The United States has sanctioned four Russian and Chinese entities respectively over promoting Iran's ballistic missiles program, drawing an angry response from Beijing. A vehicular attack occurred in which a Palestinian driver rammed his vehicle into a group of Israeli border police officers who responded with live fire, neutralizing the threat. The incident occurred at the Azaim checkpoint, situated on the easternmost security barrier that separates Jerusalem and Area C of the West Bank. I can confirm to TV7 that the Israeli National Police responded to a terrorist attack that took place at the Azaim security checkpoint on the outskirts of Jerusalem. The vehicle had been pulled over and the suspect's ID was being checked. He had a fake ID and then the suspect drove his vehicle directly towards border police officers that were carrying out security measures. A rapid response took place at the scene. Shots were fired towards the vehicle to stop it and the vehicle was apprehended and the terrorist was taken to hospital with critical wounds where he was confirmed dead later on. Heightened security is continuing in Jerusalem in order to prevent any further terrorist attacks. It was further confirmed that one Israeli border police officer sustained light injuries. Palestinian officials did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Turning now to the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, where deteriorating public health, a failing economy and widespread poverty are seemingly challenging the rule of the Islamist organizations in the densely populated enclave. A report published by the United Nations yesterday during a conference on trade and development directs most of its accusations at Israel over its refusal to lift its military blockade on the territory whose rulers proactively and openly call for the annihilation of the Jewish state. Among others, the report claims that overall economic losses due to the Israeli blockade and three separate conflicts between the Hamas organization and Israel since 2007 ranged from 7.8 to 16.7 billion US dollars. Further claim that Gaza's economy grew by a total of just 4.8% during the entire reported period even as its population grew over 40 percent. The report also briefly mentions the indiscriminate rocket fire by Islamist militants toward Israel, yet it did not seek to highlight the fact that the Israeli blockade coincides with an Egyptian blockade along Gaza's western border and a refusal by the Palestinian Authority, which is headquartered in the West Bank city of Ramallah, to transfer funds to their Hamas rivals in the Gaza Strip. In response to its report, Israel's foreign ministry accused the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development of failing its mission to assist developing economies and presenting a, quote, one-sided and distorted depiction that disregards terrorist organizations' control over the Gaza Strip and their responsibility for what occurs in the Palestinian enclave. Separately in Gaza, Hamas spokesman Hazem Qasim praised the United Nations, claiming its report revealed the level of the crime committed by Israel. He stressed, quote, This siege has amounted to a real war crime and pushed all services sectors in the Gaza Strip to collapse. The Hamas spokesman also sought to blame the Jewish state for a reported spike in coronavirus morbidity and warned that Israel's continued blockade was the sole reason for a looming humanitarian calamity. In response, the IDF coordinator for government activities, Major General Kamil Abu Rukun, rejected these allegations, highlighting extensive Israeli efforts to assure that the residents of Gaza do receive the humanitarian tools to confront the spreading disease. من المهم بالنسبة لنا أن نشدد ونؤكد بأنني والمؤسسة التي أقف على رأسها أو أي جهة إسرائيلية أخرى. لم نمنع أي توجه أو طلب لإدخال المساعدات الطبية أيًا كانت 
ونحن نرحب بكل دعم يصل من الجهات المختلفة حتى الآن تم إدخال العشرات من الكثيرة من أجهزة التنفس الصناعي والكثير من أجهزة الـ PCR المتطورة للكشف عن الكورونا والتي زادت وتيرة الفحوصات من 200 إلى 2500 فحص يوميا وقمنا كذلك بإدخال العشرات من أجهزة توليد الأكسجين والمئات من أجهزة علاج ضيق التنفس للمستشفيات وللاستعمال المنزلي وتمت إضافة المئات من الأسرة للمستشفيات وإدخال 600 طن من الأدوية والمعدات الطبية والحيوية بالتنسيق معنا وبضمنها عشرات الألاف من أطقم فحص تشخيص الكورونا بإمكان جميع هذه الأمور مساعدة الأجهزة الصحية على تقديم العلاج وإنقاذ الحياة Turning to the Islamic Republic of Iran, where President Hassan Rouhani voiced his regime's pleasure for the projected shift of power in Washington, D.C. The Iranian head of state, who technically serves as an advisor to the supreme leader of the Islamic Republic, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, went on to voice hope that the next U.S. administration would compensate the Islamic Republic for the fiscal losses it sustained during the rule of the Trump administration. اقدامات تروریستی این رو به سراحت محکوم بکنه و جبران بکنه سیاست های نادرستی که دولت قبلی در طول چهار سال اعمال کرد President Rouhani also remarked his regime's will to re-enter the 2015 nuclear agreement asserting that it could resolve many of the existing difficulties for the Islamic Republic ایران و آمریکا هر دو میتونن تصمیم بگیرن و اعلام کنن که برمیگردند به شرایط 20 ژانویه 2017 هم ما برمیگردیم به شرایط 20 ژانویه 2017 هم آمریکا برگرده به شرایط 20 ژانویه 2017 و این میتونه حل بزرگی برای بسیاری از مسائل و مشکلات باشه و مسیر و شرایط رو کاملا تغییر بده. It is important to mention that the remarks by the Iranian president are hollow of substance. Rouhani made these remarks a day after the Iranian parliament's National Security and Foreign Policy Committee discussed a plan to significantly increase Iran's nuclear activities, including uranium enrichment levels. This meeting, which was confirmed to TV7 by Iranian sources, comes on the heels of yet another meeting earlier this week, during which Iranian lawmakers approved three articles of a bill requiring the government to raise uranium enrichment levels to 20%. According to an active intelligence analyst who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, the latest Iranian nuclear-related activities are part of a so-called strategic action plan to force the United States under a projected Biden administration to re-enter the 2015 nuclear agreement or else face a nuclear-armed Iran. And while the Islamic Republic is ratcheting up its nuclear activities, China in parallel is making extensive efforts of its own to stop the United States from sanctioning entities that advance Tehran's ballistic missile program. Yanjangshu,中方一贯坚决反对美国对其他国家实施单边制裁和长臂管辖。我们敦促美方立即纠正错误做法,撤销这些非法的制裁。中方将继续致力于维护国际防扩散体系,严格履行国际防扩散义务
to impose sanctions on four entities in China and Russia, respectively, which have been found guilty of promoting Iran's ballistic missile program, despite the fact that under paragraph 3 of an XB of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, Iran is called upon not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons, including launches using such ballistic missile technology. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up the residents of Gaza in prayer for their salvation and peace, alongside prayers, of course, for the persecuted brethren throughout Africa, the Middle East and Far East, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. Separately, I would like to thank all of you who partner with TV7 Israel. Your dedicated monthly support for TV7, both by means of prayer and finance, is an essential component for ongoing operations. Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.